Hello and welcome to Solver's Premium Overview. My name is Franco Rotoli. I'm an Applications Engineer with CAD Dimensions. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Solver's Premium Package and what it's included. Um, many of you are recent customers of Solver's Premium. You've recently purchased it and we want to make sure we portray to you what is in the software and that uh, we make sure that you're using it and you're using it to its full potential. So I have a quick couple uh, vignettes to show you today. Um, again, I'm not going to get in. This isn't uh, necessarily a training class. I'm not going to get into exactly how the software works, but I'm just going to show you some of the functionality. Um, if you are interested in training, then uh, feel free to give us a call, and we will be more than happy to set that up. SolidWorks also has a bunch of tutorials, and you all know that the help file is great in SolidWorks, and you can uh, you can learn through there. So. Here's a, a little bit of a breakdown, a subset of the breakdown of the differences between SolidWorks Standard, Professional, and Premium. I know all of you can read this, so uh, I'm just going to go through and um, <clears throat> move on to the next part, which basically means that we're going to talk about SolidWorks Premium. Again, you can't really read this. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. And here are the differentiators between SolidWorks Premium and SolidWorks Professional. Uh, you get the, the piping and tubing, the electrical harness design. Um, what we're going to be focusing on is the kinematic motion simulation and the structural validation. We're going to be talking about um, SolidWorks Motion and SolidWorks Simulation. Those are what those are more commonly referred to as. So in this webinar, this is what we're going to be focusing on. Speaking of simulation, uh, simulation itself comes in three different flavors. Uh, the first of which is included in SolidWorks Premium, which we're, we're going to be talking about today, um, which include a static study as well as a SolidWorks Motion study. So those are the two simulation products that are included in Premium. If you upgrade, and there is an upgrade path available um, to upgrade uh, to Simulation Professional, then we have frequency, fatigue optimization, thermal, drop test, and pressure vessel design. Above that, there's also Simulation Premium. Simulation Premium includes all of that, including nonlinear, com some composite materials, and advanced dynamics. Again, for today, we're going to be talking about a static study with a motion study. We're also going to get into a little bit of um, uh, design scenarios, which we'll talk about later. But if you want to learn about any of the other products, then tune in tomorrow for my next uh, webinar in this series, and we'll talk about all the other products that uh, Simulation Premium includes. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first problem or our first uh, project here is this pipe lifter. You can see the uh, picture of it in the lower right hand corner here of uh, the actual real life pipe lifter and what we're going to be doing is studying this and seeing what kind of loads it can handle and, and how it actually works in the real world uh, but while it's all in our design phase. Um, our goals are to see what stresses the center hub sees under the lifting of this particular pipe and uh, what kind of forces are needed to lift this pipe as well. Uh, if we jump into SolidWorks, I have the assembly open here, we can see that this pipe is actually using the measure tool in SolidWorks. The um, diameter is actually about four feet across. All right, So it's four and a half feet across. It's a rather large pipe and it is made of concrete so it is rather heavy. So we're going to want to make sure that our pipe lifter can, can, see, can lift this. So what we do is we set up a motion study down here. Uh, we right click and we create a new motion study. Um, I already have one created. We see we have gravity, um, a motor, an arm lifter, uh, which is the contact set between the arm and the lifter, between the pipe and the ground, as well as the arm and the pipe. Okay, so you set up contact sets. I already have this run because it does take a few seconds to run. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that motion analysis, analysis is selected here. To get this option, you do have to turn it on in add-ins. So we go to Tools, Add-ins, and we make sure that SolidWorks Motion as well as SolidWorks Simulation is, are checked. With those checked, we set up the study and we watch it run. So you can see the arm moving down, the arm is lifting up, and as they come back up, there is a little bit of compression and it in fact does lift the pipe up. So I can see how my assembly works in real life uh, using the contact sets as well as friction. Um, so you can see that it actually does move as expected. If it didn't, then I would have to go back and possibly modify my design to make sure that it acts as 
if I, as though I want it, or as how I want it, excuse me. Uh, the next part of this, and this is the really neat part with motion, is you can set up simulation to run it every step of the way. I've already, again, I already have that set up, but you can see a stress plot of this center hub because this is the one we're concerned about. We can, well, this takes a second to call up, but we can see um, the stresses propagate as this is animating. So we click play and we can see very little stress on it as it's just sitting there, but as it goes down into the pipe and starts retracting, we can see the stress is propagating through. Now as you can see it's a little bit choppier than my animation. I didn't solve for every frame, again for, for time's sake I didn't solve for every frame, but you certainly could. It would just take a little bit longer to solve. So this happens to be a stress plot and we can see what stresses are being transferred into this hub. And obviously I could have selected more components so I could see the stresses in the arms too, but for this study we're not concerned about that. So we see our max stress is about 6,000 PSI at this point. Um, I can also do deformation plots, and we see our max deformation in here is still 0 0.02 millimeters, not a ton of deformation. I can also do a factor of safety plot. We see our minimum factor, safety, factor of safety is about 6.5, so we're really nowhere near our failure criteria for this um, for this component. A re another really neat feature because they're all tied in so closely together, motion and simulation and SolidWorks, under the simulation dropdown I can check import motion loads and what I can do is I can tell simulation to on this component, so the lifter base which is our center hub, I want you to grab the motion load at six seconds, and you'll see why in a second, um, say OK. And what it does is it actually imports a motion load to that component. It creates a static study of the scenario that it's seeing at six seconds here into that component. So we open up that component, and we can see here that there's already a study created with all the remote loads and remote forces as well as gravity on this component. So we run this, and again it takes a few seconds to run, but uh, we'll hide here and hide this so it gets out of our way. And we can see the stresses at six seconds uh, where, where we're in. Okay. Um, the beauty of having it here is that I can probe any, any location that I want and I can see the exact value of my stress. So I can probe it in the high areas of stress. I can go through and I can uh, do section plots. I can do any other plots that I want. In this case, factor of safety here. Um, in this case, it's a little bit higher. My mesh in this case is a little bit different than it was in motion. But again, uh, I can go in here and I know my loads are correct here. So I can go in and I can uh, refine the mesh if I need to to get more accurate results. Another great part of simulation is, I, is the reporting feature. So in simulation I can go down to report and I can create a Microsoft Word report that looks like this with all my information from my study. And this is again fully customizable because it is in Microsoft Word. I can go in here and I can remove sections, I can add sections, um, I can add screenshots if I want. It has all the information about my loads, in this case it has a lot of remote loads, uh, all my mesh information and screen captures of my results. Okay, So you can very quickly show um, your boss, a customer, whatever, your simulation results um, that makes it look like you worked on this report for a long, long time, when in reality it was only a couple of button clicks. So, jumping back to our analysis, we can see that the uh, max stress is about 4,300 PSI, nowhere near our yield strength. Our factor of safety is around 7. Um, again, I would probably refine some mesh and make sure that, uh, make sure that my mesh is 100% correct but uh, as we know that our loads are correct. The last thing on our, if I jump back to the PowerPoint here, we need to see what kind of forces are needed to lift the pipe. So let's jump back to our assembly. 
and coming default out of motion are our reaction force plots. We can see down here under the results we have a reaction force plot and it'll play it over time. So as I play this we can watch the reaction force on this lifter. We can see that the maximum reaction force is about 1800 pounds which in fact is just a little bit more than the mass properties show of this pipe because obviously we have to overcome or we have to accelerate um, due to gravity and things like that so it's it makes sense that uh, we're, we're going to be a little bit high here so um, more importantly we're nowhere near failure at this point um, so we know that this is going to work so that's just a quick little example of how SolidWorks motion ties into SolidWorks and simulation and how you can use the two in conjunction to get very quick results um, and see if your assemblies are going to function the way that you expect them to um, and if they're going to fail out in the field. Again, that's just a very, very quick subset of motion and it's a very quick subset of simulation. Uh, we're going to jump into a simulation with our next problem a little bit deeper, not a ton deeper, but a little bit deeper. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or um, stop by the help, stop by our website. We have a ton of information on our website um, and we, we also offer training on all of our products. Our next problem is the support bracket and our goals for this, uh, for this project are this bracket must support 2,000 pounds on the inner ring and our goal, another goal is we need to minimize the mass and make sure our factor of safety is above 1.5. So I'm going to jump back into SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to open that support bracket. And we're going to set up a static study. Very quickly in simulation, we go to our simulation toolbar because it is added in. We set up a static study. This is included in premium. We'll just call it study one for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to fix these back faces. Again, in our training class, we do cover all the different types of fixtures, all the different kinds of loads. In this case, we're just going to add a force of 2,000 pounds on that inner ring, as is specified by our problem statement. We're going to go ahead and run this. It takes a few seconds to run. And we can see here that our max stress is 17,000 PSI. Uh, we're nowhere near the yield strength. If I look at a factor of safety plot, our minimum factor of safety is 1.7 um, and, and mostly this area. But what we want to do next is our last goal is to minimize the mass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up what's called a design scenario. And you do that by right clicking down here in the tabs and we do uh, create new design study or design scenario. And how I have this set up in the background is I have a dimension, a global variable driving the thickness from here to here as well as this thickness. So I add that to my variables dialog. It happens to be called thick. And we'll go from uh, 0.3 to we'll say uh, 1 inch and we'll step it by 0.125. Okay, And you can add as many variables, as many dimensions as you'd like here. Um, I could have changed this fillet diameter. I could have changed this fillet diameter. Um, I could have changed the overall size of this if I wanted to, but for right now, for the demo's sake, we're just going to change the thickness. And then I start adding constraints, and constraints are added using sensors. You can add a sensor right here, and you can send uh, things that sensors monitor are mass properties, dimensions, blah, 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 measurements. Um, but what we want to do is simulation data because we want to monitor the factor of safety. Okay? And I already have that set up. It happens to be called stress one but I want to make sure that the factor of safety is more than 1.5. I also want to monitor the mass. I want to make sure that the mass is, I just want to monitor it through all my iterations. You can see that here it's going to create seven scenarios. We're going to go ahead and run this. It runs rather quickly. and you can see it populating the results down at the bottom. So 
So what it's doing, you notice that as it's populating the results, uh, some of the results are colored pink and some of them are not. The pink results basically mean that it is not meeting our requirements. You can see here that the factor of safety is in fact for these three less than 1.5, which was one of our design requirements. The mass is certainly low enough, but the factor of safety does not pass, so it colors it red for us. The last four scenarios do pass. The factor of safety is certainly above 1.5, but because it's changing this dimension, it is creating a more a heavier part. Excuse me. Um, if I click on any one of these, you can actually watch the dimensions change. Okay, so obviously here we have a much thicker, beefier part, which of course adds to the weight. So our, in this case, our best scenario is scenario four, where the dimension is 0.6875 inches uh, thick here as well as here. What I could do is I could run another uh, design scenario and only go between these two uh, dimensions and see where and basically narrow in to my um, to my final dimension. Tomorrow, what we're going to be talking about tomorrow in our webinar is optimization. That comes with SolidWorks Profe uh, Simulation Professional and above. And what it'll do is it'll actually zone in for you. You specify goals with optimization. And you can say, my goal is to minimize the mass. And it'll go through and it'll find the, um, the least amount of mass. Here we have to do it by hand. But it, you can see it is rather easy to, uh, to set this up. Jump back to my PowerPoint. Um, we know we can support 2,000 pounds, we've minimized the mass, and we uh, have a factor of safety of over 1.5. In fact, it's for scenario 4, it's actually 2. So then I can go through and I can, uh, I can safely, I can confidently um, create our, my first prototype with this and go through uh, into manufacturing. That's all I had for this quick, uh, quick lunch and learn. I'm going to open up the floor to questions. If you want to type into the chat dialog of the webinar, I'll be answering questions through that uh, medium. I'll open it up for about five or ten minutes or so, and we can uh, we can go from there. If you have any questions after the fact, feel free to give us a call at any one of our offices. We'll be happy to answer your questions. If you're interested in training, we'll be happy to schedule that. Our schedule of uh, training classes is up on our website. And again, check out our YouTube channel or caddimensions.com for um, all of our webinars that we have, we do publish up to our website. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll, uh, I'll field your questions now.